the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast, Costas and McCord, Off Their Rocker. Welcome back to another episode of Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Mike Abram here with you. Peter and Gary are coming up very soon. We've got a really great show for you today. Peter's with good friends, Louis Black and Maury Povich and some other actors and comedians. They play a little golf for uh, to raise money for Louis Black's charity, the loveyouproject.org. Uh, they all sit together and talk about the intersection of golf, comedy, life, uh, Louis's favorite animal, Got a great tip from Coach Costas. Peter yeah, helps our yeah. games, helps it every episode. And we just want to thank you for watching and being one of the tens of thousands that are watching the show. And we're about to hit 10,000 subscribers. We've got a special contest. We're going to pick the 10,000th subscriber. We want you to send in your swing. Peter's going to give you a customized swing tip for your swing. Gary's going to maybe rib you a little bit about your swing and we'll feature it on an upcoming episode. But first, Peter and Gary are here to talk about what's going on with Tiger Woods joining the PGA Tour Players Policy Board. What's going to happen? They've got some predictions. They've got some thoughts. Bryson DeChambeau's 58. The Ryder Cup's coming up. The FedEx Cup. Wow. There's a lot to talk about. We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Swing You and the Swing You app. You got to give it a try. It's the best golf app out there. Fantastic. Not only for getting yardages, it'll select clubs for you. It'll help your game with some great coaching. It'll help you identify what parts of your game need work. It's really fantastic. Gives you win conditions. It's uh, pretty amazing. Want to thank also our great sponsor, Foresight Sports. Always Peter's tips come from you with the use of a Foresight Sports product, whether that's the Tour Leading Quad Pro Launch Monitor or Peter's Sim in a Box. Foresight Sports is a leader in golf technology and they're our technology sponsor, but Let's get started. Let's get uh, Peter, Gary. Let's find out what they have to say about what's going on in the world of golf right now. We're back with Casas and McCord. Peter and Gary with us today. We've got so much going on in the world of golf. We've got a great show for you. Peter with his good friend, Louis Black, Maury Povich, and a number of comedians. But first, let's get a little update. There's a lot going on in the world of golf. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau's 58 on Live yesterday. But huge news last week, Tiger Woods named, requested to be on the policy board for the PGA Tour. Gary, what does that mean? Him backing up Monaghan and joining the policy board? What do you what do you got to say for that? Carlos, this is, I mean, this is a very interesting dynamic situation when um, the tour, okay, let's go back over it real quick. The tour now got together in agreement to agree to maybe having something going on with PIF to live. Um, in that process, in that process, um, the players basically weren't involved whatsoever in arguably the biggest decision in the history of golf. And this is PGA Tours run run by by the players, supposedly. Um, and we've got uh, we've got five business uh, men. Uh, when I was on the board, there was only I think three at that time, um, and they helped with making the policy. But I think most of the tour players were totally pissed that they were not involved whatsoever. And I'm talking, we're talking the top of the food chain of players, including Rory, who's on the board, and the guy Malinati who's on the board, uh, Charlie Hoffman that was on the board. Um, uh, let's see, we've got... Uh, uh, who's got, we've got a couple other guys on the board that uh, um, Webb Simpson. Anyway, no, nobody knew about this. So all of a sudden they went rogue, the tour, the policy board went rogue and went, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, basically cease and desist all litigation. That was the big deal. But the players didn't like all that stuff. Everything coming down on top of them. Players never liked that, ever, ever, ever. They want to be part of the process. It is their tour. So this is, I think, a juxtaposition. First of all, Tiger, I guess there was 40 guys that signed a letter to get Tiger on the 
on the board. That's kind of not how it happens. So the whole charter is going to have to be changed because Tiger just basically came on the board, said, okay, I, I want to do this, which is fantastic. You, you got to fight fire with your biggest hose, and he's our biggest our biggest hose. So going into these this new negotiations, which is going to last next couple of months before January the 1st, we've got Tiger Woods on the board. And the basic thing is the shift, the juxtaposition of power now goes to the players. There's 12 people on the board at this time. Uh, Randall Stevenson, AT&T, uh, resigned from the board um, due to the policies of Saudi Arabia and his position with AT&T. So now they're going to have to replace somebody on the board. So there's there's six people that are tour players, and then there are six people that are independent uh, uh, business people and the commissioner. To me, the commissioner is a very weak link in this in this whole situation. I, I don't see how Jay stands this on, onset of, uh, of new policy where the players are in charge and what he did uh, with Jimmy Dunn and their clandestine operation to merge with Live without telling anybody. And again, the players want to be represented. I thought it was either they're either going to go union on them and, uh, and demand things or they're going to do what they did right now, put Tiger on the board and, and have, a, uh, have a political power uh, now that are just players, Peter. What uh, as you watch this, what 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 did you see, and what do you think of this whole juxtaposition that the board was well, taking? It, it's for me, it's very it's very confusing. That's the best word. Um, we know that the players have never had any real <laughs> power uh, for years. It's been always uh, Panavidra, the commissioner, whether it was Fincham or Beeman or or now Monahan who basically have, have run the show and the players have just done what they're told. And then we had this little uprising and now it's like the pendulum is always swinging back and forth. And I see us going from a totalitarian regime where the commissioner was entirely in charge of everything. The board did what he asked for to now the players are going to try and run the show. Well, that's the inmates running the asylum. I, I see absolutely no way for 200 players Cut it down to whatever on the policy board or the or the PAC or, or whatever. I see absolutely no way. It's kind of like Republicans and Democrats. You're not going to get a consensus among the players. But the pendulum's got to switch that way for a while. And then they'll come back to neutral again. And I think when they come back to neutral again, it most likely is going to be with a new commissioner. Uh, because I think uh, Monaghan has probably worn out his welcome. And I think, you know, Gary, I go back to when – Back in 96, 97, when Tiger came on the scene and, and he was their ace in the hole. He, he, was, he was the needle. He was the clock. He was everything. And the commissioner rode his butt. And they, he told sponsors, he told networks, this is what you're going to do. Take it or leave it. Like it or not. I don't care because I got the ace up my sleeve and the ace is Tiger Woods. Now, Tiger's gone from, from playing, essentially. But the commissioner is trying to suck him back in, kind of like the godfather, and, and trying to get him to, to be on the side of the PGA Tour. But I've never known, and I'll ask you this, Gary, have you ever known Tiger to do something for somebody else other than Tiger? Everything Absolutely. Tiger's ever done <laughs> Absolutely is, not. Is, is, <laughs> it's about him, right? I mean, if, right. If, if, I, if I were to place a bet in Vegas – I would bet that he'd get Mark Steinberg to be the next commissioner. So, so that and Tiger's never going to be the commissioner because he, he doesn't have the wherewithal to do that, doesn't want to work that hard at his stage in life, I don't believe. So he might get Steiny to come in and, and, and oust uh, Monaghan and become the new commissioner. I don't know. But this is going to be really exciting to watch over the next few months and even a year uh, because the players want to – regain power. But I think when they see how completely destructive trying to get 200 people to agree on anything is, then, then we're going to morph into another entity. And for those who don't yeah, know, I, their I, viewers, our viewers and listeners who don't know, Mark Steinberg, of course, is Tiger's longtime agent manager that runs everything for him. Um, yeah. Gary, what you, you told me as soon as you heard this, you had a prediction. Yeah, I, I thought I thought Tiger was going to be put in a position to be the next commissioner, um, which again would make Mark Steinberg 
very, very powerful <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, Mark uh, has run Tiger's business for a long time, and that relationship would not go away if Tiger was propped up to do that. Remember, guys, when, when this thing all started in 1968, when the PGA Tour um, uh, departed from the PGA yeah. of America, uh, the first guy we got in to run everything was a very smart golfer, Dean Beeman. And Dean set up this whole thing. Dean was a player. Okay. And then after Dean left, then we started to get the marketing guys involved with the tour as the commissioner and so forth. So now basically are we going back to the womb and going back to a player to run this and to have the legitimacy of the tour backing? And if it was Tiger, uh, most of the guys are going to back him. Okay. They're too scared not to in that position. What's going to be interesting, I think, is to see where, where the PIF and the tour, now we've agreed to agree uh, with this new company, Nuco, okay, do, do you take Tiger and you put him in charge of that under uh, Nuryafar, uh, Roma Ayan, and, and let them run that entity, the tour stays the same, or do does Tiger just take it and go and just throw a grenade in there and get rid of Saudi Arabia and live and all that stuff, and we go quietly like we have been, and let them exist that way. The one big thing was there's no litigation and they can't come back and litigate now uh, under this ruling. So I think the tour got what it wanted. It didn't want to spend 50 to 100 million a year trying to trying to go against PIF, which is 670 billion. Okay, we're not gonna win that. So now, I, I, Peter, I, everything's up in the air for these next couple of months of what now with Tiger on the board, does he hate live that bad to go get out of here we're going to do our deal let them do their deal or do we coexist with this new company take advantage of a couple of billion dollars that are just sitting there i don't know this thing is going to get really entertaining as far as the uh as far as the process and where we're going now with the board that is made up of of um of these players that now want to run run the tour well, Gary, I've, I've never had less confidence in my life in the golf IQ of the people running golf, whether it's the RNA, the USGA, uh, the PGA Tour, the PGA of America. I have never had less confidence in those people running the game of golf for the good of the game of golf. So I'm going to sit back. Quite frankly, I'm getting bored with this whole thing. I, I, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's become a real pain in the ass. Uh, you know, either get it solved or or, or – blow it up or whatever but let's get on with it right let's let's do something uh to resolve this issue we still see you you watch the live telecast i'm so fed up with them constantly hyping live oh we're the guests we're the, we're the, no just play your tournaments they're wonderful that they're they're entertaining but shut up you're not the best and the pga tour saying well you know we are the legacy we are this we are that no you're not it's there's lots of golf besides the pga tour and the PGA Tour doesn't run worldwide golf. Everybody's out for their own interest, and, and I've, I've had it up to here. I want to get on with golf. I, I want to just enjoy the game, and I want people to play good television broadcasts, good entertainment value, and let's get on with it. I, I, I Really, it's, it's just aggravating beyond all belief right now. Switching it over yeah, to you golf. Know, the entertainment part of it. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. The entertainment part of it. Was pretty good for Bryson on Friday and Saturday when he finished his tournament yeah. in 60, 61.58. What? Are you kidding? He, he shoots 119. Is that right? 119. You couldn't do that with a scramble team no. with everybody with a 10 handicap, right? No couldn't chance. The main, couldn't do it. main journalists are, are not touching it. They're, they're not. I saw nothing online to speak of about what Bryson did. And I thought it was you, – you and I have run tournaments there. We, we've, I've walked mm -hmm. that golf course. Um, the fact that Bryson could hit his driver as far as he hit it and find as many fairways as he did, to me, was a really scary proposition. He's got him a new driver now, a little more roll and bulge. The toe hits come back. The heel hits come back. He's got more confidence. He's, he, if he drives it like that, wedges it like he's been wedging it, and continues to putt like that, game over. You know, that's that's the, that's the thing for me. All right, you get a guy like that, Peter, playing really good like that, hitting a new crank driver 400,000 yards. Do you put him on the Ryder Cup? 
you know, that's the next big issue to, to be resolved <laughs> in golf is, is who's going to play, right? And it's yep. going to be yep. – there's there's no way you're going to make everybody happy. That's just not going to happen, whether it's on the European side or the American side. But I mean, I think it, I think it would be hilarious. You put Brooks and Bryson together, for, so they've come full circle now from from their <laughs> spat where they wouldn't talk yep. to each other to yep. being Ryder Cup partners, right? I mean, yep. who, who would want to play that that two ball? Yeah, but well, it, it's. I mean, it's going to be very interesting coming down to this end. Maybe the Ryder Cup will take a little off of the uh, of what's going on politically in the in the world of well, golf. They have a, they have a chance. Golf. They have a chance to take the edge off of this thing. Yeah, yeah. If they, they if they boycott the live players, then the chasm gets bigger and deeper. Yeah. If yeah. they bring them in and they incorporate them, then there's a chance there could be a little bit of reconciliation. Europe's <coughs> excuse me. Europe's another thing entirely. We'll see. Yeah, I I think Zach is being talked to by a lot of people about that, and I think that those people are probably uh, dictating policy on the tour, trying to trying to push it towards a direction. So I think we'll find out if those two guys, if if Bryson keeps playing well, um, man, <laughs> you, it's like like you said, Peter, you got three seventy on every tee shot, and if he's hitting it straight, that's going to scare the hell out of some of those guys on the other side. So, and if they, they want to embrace them and take them and go, okay, guys, we're softening up. We made a deal to, to agree. Um, let's, let's go ahead and let them play and, and, uh, and, and get this thing back, you know, get this thing back to a level where there is some consistency in the game. And for the, for the, I hate the phrase for the good of the game, but for the game to get back to an equilibrium, where we're not tipping one side or the other every day, frantically from one side to the other. I'm like, Peter, I'm getting tired of it. I, I, I used to read every article. and I, yeah, uh, That's what I'm saying. Wait, let's just wait and see what happens. So hopefully this game will get a bigger rudder in the water and we can stabilize and get, get going. And maybe, maybe like you said, maybe the Ryder Cup, when you say, okay, you two guys, uh, we're talking about Brooks and Bryson. Um, that'd be a hell of a team. Come on over from your side, and uh, you know we'll meet in the middle and 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 go for there and just watch the next two months and see how Tiger affects this whole thing. The, the one good thing we have going for us, if that's going to happen, is that the PGA Tour doesn't really have any say so in this process. It's the PGA of America, so Seth yeah. Waugh may be able to be a little bit more temperate, a little bit more congenial, and tell. Uh, Zach, to, you know what? It's okay. If you want to pick them, pick them. I'm not going to tell you who to pick, but I'm not going to tell you who not to pick either. Uh, so there, and, there's and a our, little bit of hope. Yeah, and our PGA, he could tell him our PGA champion is Brooks Kepka, who's with Liv. So there's a little bit of that. There, a lot of great well, I stuff. I think he's qualified uh, anyhow. Yeah, he has. I think he's going to be in. He's qualified he anyhow. Bryson. Bryson hasn't, but he has. So again, I just captain's looked, pick. I, yeah. Maybe we'll see. I looked online, Peter. There's a lot of numbers out there that Bryson is playing. Maybe one of the top uh, non-qualified guys one for the pa- captain's picks as far as strokes gained, and now he's putting. Like I mean, he had 23 putts yesterday. He only made one putt outside of 20 feet yesterday too. With that, uh, that's 58 with a bogey. Um, and it was that last putt on his 18th hole. He had to two putt from 40 feet to shoot 59 and he drained it. But um, I think it's going to be really interesting what happens. Uh, Mm -hmm. Justin Thomas didn't qualify now for the top 70 FedEx cup starts this weekend. Um, We're going to have three weeks of the FedEx cup. Then we're going to find out who's going to pick who for the Ryder cup. And we'll, uh, we'll give you Peter and Gary will give us our two cents. Hey fellas, we're approaching 10,000 subscribers on our little YouTube channel. Um, want to have a little contest. We want our people to cut. We want them to subscribe. If they subscribe and give a comment about the show, send in their video, send in the video of your swing, everybody. And we're going to pick one. And Peter and Gary are going to break down your swing. Peter's probably going to help your swing. Gary might uh, try to tear down your, uh, gonna, your emotional we're gonna stability. One, we're going to pick one. What? We're going to pick what, one swing. Criteria? We're going to pick one That's swing. Good? The, cra- the one or that we like. The swing. Just we're going to pick one, one that we, get, yeah, that we get a kick out of. How about that? I'm going to let you guys. There pick you go. One. There you go. 
There you go. <laughs> I like yeah. that getting the kick out. Subscriber. It, the 10, and you'll be subscriber. The 10,000th oh, okay. subscriber. We'll try to pick the 10,000th subscribers. That's coming up very soon. That's going to be in the next couple of weeks. But we're going to pick Whoa. one swing, the 10,000th subscriber. Um, and you got to put it in there. And remember to comment and subscribe. And uh, again, Peter will break it down. Gary will break you down, maybe like he does on the golf course that you see from the guys. And uh, we'll we'll have some more from Peter and Gary in a couple of weeks. As soon as we find out this Ryder Cup situation, uh, guys, thanks so much. We will be back with more Costas and McCord off their rockers. Don't go away. Peter, we've got a great show. Peter, Lewis Black, Maury Povich, and some comedians coming up in just a minute. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Maury Povich with a special edition of Costas and McCord off their rockers. Now, why would I be here? There's a very good reason. Because when we come back on Costas and McCord off their rockers, we're going to have the results of the test. Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers is presented by Swing U. Check out the incredible Swing U app. It gives you great GPS course data from tee to green, and including green reading. And you know, even simple strokes game features can help you improve your game. So go out and check on the App Store or at SwingU.com. It's a great app. It'll shave strokes off your game. Visit our website at costasmacore.com, like and subscribe at our YouTube channel, and on any social media, Costas and McCord, off their rockers. Now let's get back to Costas and McCord, off their rockers, with Peter and Gary. Mike Abram here with you. Costas and McCord, off their rockers. We're on location today, the golf club at Dove Mountain with Peter Costas for his great friend, Lewis Black's charity golf tournament. Peter loves to play golf in his free time, especially for a good cause. And today, his playing partners are old friend and talk show legend, Maury Povich, comedian, actor, producer, Larry Wilmore, and of course, the legendary comedian, Lewis Black. They're all raising money and awareness for the Love You Project at the spectacular golf club at Dove Mountain in Marana, Arizona. The windy course conditions didn't deter the guys from having fun and posting a good round. Afterwards, Peter had a little round table discussion to talk about the intersection of comedy, show business, and golf. We heard what Lewis's favorite animal is, and we get the results of a paternity test from Maury. All right, Peter Costas here, the Costas half of the Costas McCord team. We're here in Tucson, Arizona, actually Marana, at the beautiful Dove Mountain Resort for a special event that Lou is hosting for the Love You Project. It's a tremendous charity. We'll give you more information on that later, how you can donate and maybe help us out, raise some cash for this wonderful event. Um, I'm here with some friends. I admit that. They are friends. Um, <laughs> Although it's, at times I wonder, Maury Povich, Joe Grafasi, Jeff Stilson. Uh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we're, I want to see what the reaction would be. I want to see what the reaction would be. Of course, it's Jeff yeah. Stilson, Mark Lynn yeah. Baker, and everybody knows Maury. Um, I, I'm your opener now too. Yeah. 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 Everybody knows Maury as I as I tap Lewis on the hand and arm. We're here. We played golf today. We got beat up by the golf course, the weather, the wind, and, and so on and so forth. We're going to talk golf. We're going to talk comedy. We're going to talk whatever the hell we want to talk about right now. But my first question to each of you, because you're entertainers in, in your own world, is there any correlation whatsoever between entertainment and golf? Jeff? Yes. There is. What well, is I think it? The, I think... Uh, the little discussion you have in your head when you're standing over a shot is very similar to the discussion you have in your head when you're about to go on stage. And really? Yeah, you, you can be very mean to yourself. And uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm, I'm traumatized so when self, I play golf. And yeah, self-talk is a thing. And oh God, yeah. Oh. I, I don't know. Maybe Lewis has had a different experience, but yeah, there's a voice in your head commenting on everything you do when you're on stage. And, and when it's not going well in golf, it's the same kind of conversation. It gets very personal and mean. 
So you guys beat yourself up. Yeah, as well. it's awful. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. It's awful. Yeah. Well, some uh, uh, some people like Mark should beat themselves up, <laughs> but but I don't. He doesn't. <laughs> he loves everything he does, yes. and we'll tell you about it. Yeah. Um, no, it's but it is true. Your brain really does. It, it does a commentary. Do you beat yourself up on the golf course? Uh, when I step up to that first tee, my my brain is filled with nothing but hope and promise. <laughs> I actually believe that this could be the day that I shoot par. Now, I've never done that. I've never come close to that. But when I step up to the first tee, I believe it could happen. So that's the inspiration. So that's the voice I have in my head. I, it's clearly it's insane. And how long does that voice last? The, uh, through the first swing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's when you realize you're not one of the chosen then, then people. You, right? Then you realize, okay, this may not be the day, or or you know, or that wasn't the swing. But but the next shot that could that could do it. That it could all it. it could all write itself. Yeah. The ship could write itself, and and something wonderful could happen. And that's what's absolutely similar to a stand-up comic who's dying on stage. <laughs> who literally is sitting there and he could be going horrifically and I've watched a number of comics in, including m myself has gone, I've gone through it where you're dying and you go in the same way in golf you have the bad swing and you go on the next one and the same thing in, in stand up you go well that sucked but I have this other thing that I'm going to start now and it's really going to bring them around and all you're doing really is digging a bigger I hole. think it's worse in golf because you know when you're failing when you're doing comedy you get that flop sweat and you think you think they hate me they hate me but in golf the they is you so I hate me I hate me as well so you're you're getting hated by yourself it's and the it's, transitive property though if yeah, they hate you then you hate you so it's all the same okay, thing same right? yeah. and, the, and, and the thing is in golf n no one can help you it's not like you can substitute a new a new player for the team right. if you're hitting the shitty shots you yeah. you're still hitting the shitty shots right. and nobody can save you on the stage right yeah. other than you other than you so yeah I, I take a completely different view of this because uh, I've played a lot of pro-am tournaments of course you know and uh, the AT&T and the Bob Hope the old Bob Hope and, and many others and there's always a crowd around everybody wants to know you know what's it like are you nervous around the crowd but I treat it the way I would a talk show. I don't f care a damn thing about my audience on the talk show who are watching this show. I'm more interested in the guest. And in golf, I want to be good for that pro that I've got to play with for 18 holes. And that's my nerve. That's where my nerves come into play is I want to I want to make sure that the pro knows that I'm good the same way a guest knows I'm good when I'm interviewing him. Who 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 made you the most nervous of of you of all your partners in the pro ams? Costas. <laughs> <laughs> because he's my fucking teacher. <laughs> and to this day, wow. to this day, you get nervous. Yeah, I mean our relationship, I mean should I tell him about it? Go ahead. Oh, yeah, be so. my guest. That's fine. Whoa. I I had never I had never had a golf lesson in my life until I was fifty years old, and so for my fiftieth birthday, my wife, the great journalist Connie Chung, does all this research and has figured out who the best teacher is and is going to fly that teacher to our home at that time in in New Jersey, and we were going to have a weekend lesson, and so she tells me that it's Peter Costas, and I went. Who the fuck is he? You know, I don't know there's anything about him. And so at the same time, I had flown to London because I was interviewing Sammy Davis Jr., who had just written his autobiography, and he was at the uh, Prince Albert Hall, and he was in concert. And so in order to get to Costas, I had to take... I had to take the Concord back from London to New York and then drive down to the Jersey Shore. And now... My wife says, Peter Costas, he is the golf god. I'm buying him for you. This was 35 fucking years ago. All right, time out, time out. Now, my part of the story, I, I, get the, I pick up the phone, <laughs> and I said, hello. She says, I'm looking, and Connie has this deep, sexy voice, and she goes, I'm looking for Peter Costas. This is he. Who is this? This is Connie Chung. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, which one of my buddies put you up to this? Boom, hang up the phone. <laughs> really? Phone, yeah, phone 
rings again. No, no, this really is Connie. Please don't hang up. I have a proposition for you. I go, OK, now she goes, she goes, I want to give you to my husband for his 50th birthday, to which I responded, well, I'm not that kind of guy. But then we, we started this and it's been it's been an ongoing uh, love affair from my perspective for 35 years. And, and when Lewis comes into the act, uh, 20 years after that for my 70th birthday that was celebrated in our apartment in New York and my wife, because we loved Lewis, uh, hires Lewis to be the entertainment and Peter and, and Sandy, his wife are there and uh, Lewis will not take any kind of pay for the evening. And my wife says, declares it spontaneously, okay, Lewis, you see that fellow Peter Costas? You now have free lessons with him the rest of your life. <laughs> and that was yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. All right. By the way, she's behind on payments. I know she's behind. Yeah, well, take, no. <laughs> take it out of her advance on her memoirs that she's writing. So when you started together, and I promise this will be my last question, but I'm curious now. What was your handicap? Okay, and, so what and, happened was I was probably, I had won some club championships, and, you know, I, would, I had never had a lesson. Oh, who hasn't? And, <laughs> and so uh, I was probably about a five, six, seven handicap, and then, P, and then Costas and McCord get me, and uh, so now I'm 50, and now I'm playing still in a little club chance, but nothing competitively nationally. And then Costas finally says, because we're playing with McCord a lot, you know, you really should compete competitively. I said, well, no, you, you, you got enough game. So at the age of 61, I qualified for the U.S. Senior Amateur and made match play, all because wow, of Costas. 61. Yep. And that was the cool. highlight. And, and that was the highlight. And by the way, I haven't done shit since. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in defense of Maury, I mean, it was just three weeks ago, Paul Casey was hitting balls, and, and uh, I drove up. I was a little late for the lesson, and I stood there like this behind him. I said, how are you hitting it? He says, great. I'm, it's really good. And, and he completely just hit an awful golf shot. And he turns around, and he goes, fuck you. Get out of here. He, he couldn't handle the pressure <laughs> yeah. by crossing yeah. arms behind it. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a way of getting you off your it, focus. It, I'm going to tell you, it's the most nervous I ever have been <laughs> when I'm playing golf with Peter because – I want to prove to him that I've got it because of him. And I suck when I'm around him a lot of times. How's that working out? Fucking shank the fucking five wood. How's that? Now you, you and I have history that you don't know about because you, oh, that, I, I, first of all, I'm a Red Sox fan. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Rhonda. Go no, ahead. no, 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 no. That's different. <laughs> This is this is a a, a family show. Um, <laughs> oh, um, you played Yogi Berra. Yes, right. And 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 who else was the Yankee? Uh, I played Phil Rizzuto. Phil Rizzuto. Yeah, exactly. So Yogi. I only play Italians. Right. The, when I when I when I'm doing the Bob Hope at the time for USA Network, and I'm out there, and I'm interviewing the celebrities. Yeah. And we're on a, a short par three. It's maybe it's 150 yards, and Yogi's playing. Yogi comes up to the tee, and Yogi couldn't hit it from here to that window over there. And he takes but out. He loved golf. He, he loved golf. He loved yeah. it. And he and he hits a some kind of a fairway wood from 150 yards, and he hits it literally from this end of the table to that end of the table from the hole. And he's getting two shots a hole. He's got a 36 handicap. And he lies. He lies one right there, and he's he's. That's the hole. <laughs> and he walks up and he hits the putt to here. <laughs> and then he walks up and he hits that putt to there. And he, he makes that one, right? So he makes it for a four net two. And go off the green, I interview him. I said, Yogi, you know, that was a great tee shot. He goes, yeah, yeah, I, that was one of my best today. And I said, but how about that putt? He goes, yeah, I know. If I'd have hit it harder, I'd have missed it shorter. <laughs> He goes, and it, was, and it was like, it was like to me, it's like yeah. all the yogiisms, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, oh, they, they, like they, they were true. Yeah. I, my favorite story is it's not, it's not a yogiism, but it was one of his sons told it, and uh, it was like when he was like in eighth grade in St. Louis, and he was the youngest of four, I think, and all the other brothers 
had gone out. They quit school because they had to work. They were, you know, child of immigrants. They all were bricklayers like their dad. And so they wanted, Lawrence, as his real name was, they wanted him to stay in school. You know, the big thing for immigrants at the time was you get a high school diploma, you know. So uh, he said, I want to quit. I'm going to quit. He tells his mother and father, no, that's, I don't want to do anymore. Well, why don't you? Well, I want to be like the, like the guys. You know, I, wanna, I, I can go to work. And he said, no, Yogi, we don't want you to do that. We're going to take you to school. We're going to talk to your teacher, and she's going to explain why you should stay in school. So she goes to school, and his, 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 his folks say to um, the teacher, tell him why you should stay in school. And she says, Yogi, he says, you know, with all due respect, you really still don't know anything. And Yogi goes, ma'am, with all due respect, I don't suspect anything. <laughs> that was my Yogi story. We, we played uh, out in uh, California with Jerry Zachs, who directs Jerry. a lot of uh, Broadway Great, shows. Jerry. I've done five shows with Jerry. Uh, and uh, was playing Jerry Zachs, myself, we share a cart, <laughs> and Drew McCoy, who we played with today, and uh, Louis Black are sharing a cart. The first nine, we go through and there's there's profanity going on and as we pull up to the uh, we, after we play the first time we pull up to the 10th hall and Jerry leans back in the car and says oh I see when Drew hits a wonderful shot he yells fuck me and when Lewis hits a terrible shot he yells fuck me <laughs> <laughs> there you go you pigs look at that son of a bitch run oh come on it's a pitching wedge from a teacher's perspective, how do you feel about cursing? A, a golfer uh, I have using, no problem with You have no problem? Okay. No, no. I, I am a firm believer that you have to do what you have to do to get rid of the tension right. between the yeah. last shot and the next shot. Yeah. Then how come on tour uh, everybody had a distaste when Tiger threw F-bombs around? That was, that was, well, first of all, the tour, the tour wants this perception that they are lily white pure and everything is great and they don't ever do anything wrong and whatever. And so that's why I always wondered why in our ear when somebody said fuck and it was picked up by a microphone, we had to apologize for them. I, go, I didn't do anything. Why am I apologizing? Yeah, I know. Right? True, yeah, and no. and, and she was they, sorry they said that. it. So deal with it. Right. It's a, it's a word. And, and so if it becomes a distraction to the other players and, and you're, it's a tirade that affects somebody else, then I say, no, that's, that's not good. But if that's what lets you release the tension so that you can take a deep breath and walk up to your next shot and hit it effectively, I got no problem with it. I, and I can't have a problem with it because I do it, right? Yeah, I used to, the joke I used to say was is the, the great thing about golf was that, and the reason I played it was it was it allowed me to hate myself more yeah. than I did in my daily life. That's right. So when I returned to daily life, I felt a lot good. more comfortable yeah, with myself. <laughs> we have to talk animals. <laughs> what do you mean? What? What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal are dogs. And your least favorite? I'm not big on cats. And the story behind that? Uh, well. I just have never, um, you know, I, they, they, they don't really care about us. <laughs> okay? We're like superfluous. They just, you know, they literally, it's like, why are you here? When, whenever you're around, there's some cats. And the cats that I like are cats that are really act like dogs. So you can call the cat, the cat comes. But otherwise, the cat's like, why are you here? Why are you in my space? You know. And they shit in a box, okay? And no other animal shits in a box. That really is, I think, that's a tip-off that something's wrong. Peter, for, for all your viewers out there, do you believe in golf methods? No, I, I don't believe in methods. I, I, don't, I don't think every single method that I've ever studied or been acquainted with uh, helps a certain amount of people, is kind of neutral to a certain amount of people, and hurts a certain amount of people. There's no, my philosophy is there's no one swing for everybody, but everybody needs one swing. So what I teach you is different than what I teach Lou, and, and, or Jeff, or, or Mark. So that, that, that gets me right into the 
results we've been looking for all day. Oh, yeah, this is it. Oh, no. When it comes to stack and tilt, Peter, you are not the father. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a, I I pretty much knew that going in. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not a fan of methods. Um, it, it's I, I think you, I don't teach the golf swing. People find that hard to believe, but I I don't teach the golf swing. Well, I, I teach people. I I used to see it years ago when we first started, and you were teaching people like Tom Pertzer, who everybody thought had the perfect swing and Mark Kalkovecchia, who was a dead hooker, and you taught Kalkovecchia one way to hit the ball so he could fade the ball and win the British Open, and Pertzer a completely different method. Right, yeah, I, I, I teach people. So I, I gotta take what you bring to the table and work with that. I gotta take what Jeff brings to the table, work with that. All of my students, I, I, have, to, I have to work with them. I teach them, I'm not teaching the, the golf swing. I don't even know what the hell the golf swing is. You know, it, it's everybody has to have something that they can they can count on. It's in a, in a way, and I'm speaking out of my league right now, but each comic has their style, right? right? What, whatever that style is. I'm I'm a huge Stephen Wright fan, for example, yeah. right? I, yes. I I love him. Yeah. Obviously, he's from Boston, but right. his style is not for you, right. and your style is not for Jeff or anybody. You know, so I have to figure out my player's style and coach them accordingly. I can't try to turn Stephen Wright into you. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not going to work. The, the great coaches modify what they're coaching to, to fit the players on their roster. And that, that's what I try to do, and that's what I think other good teachers do in golf, is that they, they deliver the information for the person that they're working with, and that's the skills and the limitations that they, that they bring to the table. Right? So lesson for today is uh, take all the good shots you hit today and remember them tonight when you go to bed. Tomorrow, wake up and don't expect any one of them. <laughs> tomorrow you, nice. tomorrow you got to earn, you got you got to earn the good yeah, shots yeah. tomorrow, right? My, so, well, the, my favorite was is that, God, this is eight years ago, maybe 10. We had a lesson, uh, it was a really good lesson and uh, I went out, we played nine afterwards. And I literally shot lights out. Like I've never shot, played golf this well before. And I was one over par yeah. at the end of nine. And uh, he said, you know, uh, and we were, I was going to play in a tournament that we used to, to do then. It was, it was a different, it was for cystic fibrosis and uh, foundation. And uh, so I was going off to that. And I said, what do you, you know? What do you think? And he said, uh, "Well, after today, I'd have to say uh, the way things are going to go tomorrow. I just realize you're fucked." <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, he was, and I went out the next day, and all of it was gone, and I couldn't hit anything. And I, that 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 because I'm back now. I'm sitting there thinking when I get there, this is. Are you kidding me? I finally have kind of focused in on this game after years of really devoting my life to it. It's almost religious in a sense that I've given uh, all of this focus and care to the game and then to go out there and just be, oh, I mean, not even nothing, not even close to what happened the day before. And he was right. Because I was like, oh boy, that, isn't that funny what he said? Uh, I'm fucked. Uh. There he is. When you're given something to work on, and even when I give myself something to work on, and, and I hit that, that shot that I know is better than what I've been capable of doing before. And you can repeat it. And, and I go, well, sometimes, no, you don't necessarily can repeat it on the first time, but it's that shot that lets you know it's there. Right. right? I mean, I don't know about comedy. Maybe you, you come up with a new, a new bit and, and you... You do it the first time; it's great. Second time, it's maybe not as good, or whatever. But you know it's there, yeah, exactly. and you and you have to refine it and work at it and nurture it, and it, it eventually becomes something. And it's the same thing. Once you hit that one golf shot that was better than you've ever hit that shot, then you know, okay, I can do this. And I may have to work two more weeks, you know, hit a you thousand more there. balls, but I know it's there, and that's yeah. the motivation that carries you forward. 
one of the reasons the, the, your ability that's as important as your knowledge of golf is that you uh, are a really, and I'm, th this is going to sound like uh, I'm sucking up, okay? <laughs> but I'm not sucking up, okay? Because it really, uh, I have golf lessons for life, so I don't even need to tell it. this. <laughs> um, but he's, you're just, a, you're a great teacher. I mean, you really are, and they're not, you run in your life maybe f if you get five great teachers in your life. So, I mean, it's just fun to come out and work with you uh, and spend time with you, with you, you know, teaching me. It's, it, it, a lot of that fun is just the, the, uh, uh, how well you teach. I mean, that and the enjoyment. It's the best thing ever, it. having a good teacher or coach. Yeah. You remember all of them. Yeah. And, and then it, it, you hope that someday you can have that kind of impact on someone. And by the way, that, yeah. any sport. Yeah, any sport. Any sport. The guy will say, or woman will say, he's the one who yeah. gave me yeah. my talent. He's yeah. the one who made it work. He's the one that yeah. made me And you almost know immediately if they're good or not. Don't you? I've been working on it for 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I will say this. To your credit, you have been working. And, and at your age, full disclosure, Moy's 84, but he hits the ball the equivalent of somebody who's 65, maybe 70, right? And, and that's a rare commodity. I mean, he can still play legitimate golf at his age because he's motivated to keep trying to get better, keeps working at it. The game is such an addiction. I really think I can get better. I really do. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's not. That's I just great. want to maintain. No, I think I can get better. We're going to close this out with 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 a McCord Costa story from years ago, when when we were doing uh, tournaments in Chicago, we were we were doing the the Western Open at Cog Hill. And so in our off time, Gary and I would go over to Butler National, which was a great golf course, and where. The Western Open used to be originally until they only had men for members and the tour said, no more, we can't do that, right? So Gary and I go up and the upper field is a polo field and, and we're on the range and there's three people on the range. There's Gary and me on the left-hand side of the range and a hundred yards over to the right, there's a guy named Erie Ball. Now Erie Ball played in the first Masters. Whoa. Right, and at this time, Erie was exactly a hundred, wow. and it's hot, and and we're hitting balls, and Gary and I are kibitzing about the golf swing or whatever, and all of a sudden, we hear this, "Hey guys, guys, come here quick!" And now we think, "Oh shit, he's having a heart attack," you know, and we drop our clubs and we sprint as fast as we could over to Erie, and here he goes, "Hey, watch this! I think I got it." <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is golf. Thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my friends. And uh, pay attention to what we have on the screen for the Love You Project, because we really would like for you, if you, if you can get to it, to, to help us out, maybe a, a little bit of a donation here and there to help the charity out, because they're doing some phenomenal things. Check it out. Love You Project. Thanks. Don't go away, because we've got a lot more on this episode of Costas and McCord off their rockers, a great tip from Coach Costas to help your game. Remember, like, subscribe, and share at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Costas McCord. Costas and McCord, off their rockers, presented by Swing U. We'll be right back. Strokes gain stats are finally easy with the most five-star rated golf app in the country. Swing U accurately and objectively provides feedback across driving, approach shots, chipping and pitching, bunker play, and putting. Easily identify your strengths and weaknesses and laser focus your practice time so you can quickly shave strokes off your score. Download Swing U and start owning your game today. Visit our website at costasmacore.com like and subscribe at our YouTube channel and on any social media, Costas and McCord, off their rockers. Now it's time for Coach Costas. Peter gives us some great tips to help our games. This is the impact bag drill. That's used for lots of different things, but the first way I'm gonna use it 
is to teach you the delivery mechanism that the hands and wrists and arms must do to control the club face and control the shaft coming back to the golf ball. I want you to be able to hinge your wrist, get a little bit of body turn, maybe half, three quarters of the way back, and then from there, release. Release. This is a takeoff on the old Sir Henry Cotton hit the tire drill. So you learn how to hit with harder with your right hand. <clears throat> so if you don't have this delivery, delivery mechanism, I really don't care what you do with your body, your legs, your ground force reaction, whatever. It doesn't make any difference because you don't have the ability to apply it to the golf ball squarely and consistently. This will help you. So practice. Hinge, release. Hinge, release. Hinge, release. Once you get that feeling, kick it away, set up to the golf ball, and just get the feeling of hinge, release. Learn the delivery mechanism of your hands and arms so you can feel where the club face is, you can apply it square to the golf ball. Once you've got that, then you've got the heartbeat of the golf swing down and you can start to add in bigger motion, longer motion, and faster swings. But start creating a good smash factor against the bag and against the ball in a small swing. Thanks so much for watching our show today. Costas and McCord off their rockers. It was uh, pretty incredible to hear what the guys have to say about Tiger Woods maybe being the new commissioner of the PGA. We'll have more for you in that coming up. We'll have a lot more in a couple weeks about the Ryder Cup selections. And I'm sure we'll talk about FedEx and the FedEx Cup. And gosh, will the uh, Zach Johnson, the U.S. team, choose any of the live players? We'll hear more and we appreciate you watching. We thank you for subscribing. We thank you for listening to us and love those comments. Keep them coming. Share it with your friends. And remember, send your swing to Costas McCord, K-O-S-T-I-S-M-C-C-O-R-D at gmail.com. We're going to choose the 10,000th subscriber. We'll break down your swing. Well, Peter will break down your swing. And McCord might break down your ego. We'll feature it on one of the upcoming episodes. And thanks so much to Larry Wilmore, Mark Lynn Baker, Jeff Stilson, Joe Grafasi, and special thanks to Maury Povich, and of course, Lewis Black and The Love You Project. Remember, visit theloveyouproject.org to find out more and to donate. So for Peter, for Gary, I'm Mike Abram. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Swing You. Thanks to Foresight Sports. We'll see you again real soon.